everyone this is monica brinkman and i will be your host this evening and if this is your first time here this is it matters radio our sunday show where we do our best to get you the best music we can find in the whole world and i'm personally i have to say this before i uh pass this over to carrie hall uh i am someone who loves pure music i think i've told you this before i don't know where we have ever found a guest that had more pure music than the guest we have on today yes. so so i'm really excited about it um that's where you see talent so with that said i'm going to pass this over to carrie hall hello carrie hi everybody welcome to it matters radio and i am delighted to uh present to you she beat uh, she's a singer, songwriter, hails from Truro. Uh, I, 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 th I think she's actually came out of Liverpool. Is that correct to start out with? Yes, she did. Great place, <laughs> Liverpool. So I'm going to ask you, uh, She Beat, how did you get the name She Beat? Because that's a great name. Thank you. Well, um, being from Liverpool, uh, I uh, grew up listening to the Fab Four. I'm a huge fan of Lennon and McCartney songwriting. Um, and I was playing with their name and I thought she beat feels like it might be their kid sister. <laughs> <laughs> right. And right. it also, uh, you're a female and you sing with a beat. So what better name, right? And she exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. Um, you are um, uh, shown as an, let's see if I get this right, acoustic indie pop artist. What is acoustic indie pop? It, well, it's, it is what, it's, what it says on the tin, really. So it, uh, when I perform, it's just myself with my uh, acoustic electric guitar. And my songs are usually uh, little stories, so they're kind of folky. Um, they're usually uh, under three minutes long, which is quite you know, poppy, and they usually have a catchy melody. So that's that's kind of what it is, really. 
<laughs> well, it, 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 I love the name. It's, it just drove my attention right away, and I love your music. So you've played in the wonderful Cavern Club. Now, this is not the original, unfortunately. What was that like? That's got to be amazing. It was uh, It was pretty exciting. Um, I played a few times. I was lucky enough to play a few times. And uh, the first time, I remember my knees were knocking, and it was a packed uh, cavern area and yeah i don't i don't it was a bit of a uh out of body experience it was it was really thrilling <laughs> i didn't i didn't think and i haven't yet it's quite hard to beat <laughs> right right so i have this is kind of an off question why did they close down the original cavern club was it falling apart what did you did i never could figure out why they did that because it's an icon Mm. So I think uh, in the 80s, uh, I'm not sure exactly what date they they closed it down, but it, it basically it wasn't being as it wasn't as popular as it was. I think maybe in the late 70s, early 80s. It's a bit before my time, but um, basically it fell into disuse, and they needed the space above it. I think for maybe something really glamorous like a car park i mean it's really awful story <laughs> that's terrible i know yeah. i know it is really yeah. embarrassing <laughs> so I have to tell you, I have to tell you, Shebe, that Carrie has always wanted to do a pilgrimage to Liverpool to do the Beatles, and uh, she was hoping to see the Cavern Club. But now, I guess there's is there a sign or something there that well, you can appar see? Well, apparently, the cu the current Cavern Club yeah. is built directly alongside the original. So mm -hmm. where the stage. Uh, you look out this way apparently the original look was the other way i i don't know it's a bit murky the the beatles myths in liverpool are thick and fast so it's hard to know what's <laughs> true and what's not yeah well yeah it's you true. hear so many different rumors so um you are you did a liverpool acoustic songwriting challenge finalist what was that about so there's a, a local promoter in Liverpool uh, called Liverpool Acoustic and every year they have a songwriting challenge where you visit an art gallery where they hold gigs. Mm. You pick a piece of art from the wall and you write a song about it in um, usually I think it's September or October and the year that I um, was a finalist I did a song called uh, Lonely at the Top which was uh, about a picture featuring King Kong on top of the Empire State Building. Ah. <laughs> that's, that's very cool. That's very cool. So um, you like performing live, and you have notched up a very impressive conquest of different uh, clubs. Do you have a favorite that you like to perform at? I'm wondering what she's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been able to find one that I loved more than the Cavern Club yet, but that doesn't mean that I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so c keep booking her. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're going to be the next favorite. <laughs> right. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your wonderful song, Rainproof. That is such a delightful song, and now I understand it's on the BBC radio or got coverage. Talk a little bit about that song. Yeah, um, it's it's a song that I wrote to uh, cheer up my boyfriend um, who was having a, a crappy time, and um, and I feel like it's kind of it's very much my ethos, which is in life you know we get thrown so many curveballs you've got to have a positive attitude in order to get through them so that song's all about that and um there's a bbc uh what's project called bbc introducing and they play uh, music from new artists unsigned artists um, and yeah that song's been lucky enough to be played a couple of times on bbc introducing cornwall so it's pretty cool it, it, it's a great little song. It's very positive. I mean, it, it's just a delightful song. I love the verses. It's just, uh, I just, I just think it's a great song. You, wow. I'm so glad. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's amazing. You know, so, Gary, um, yes, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, speaking of songs, so we're going to be playing this song and it's one of your older ones. In fact, we're going to have the video of it, but you redid a song by the Beatles. And 
it, it she loves you. Now, mm-hmm. first of all, to me, that's a very hard song to actually show emotion in. And everyone's going to see that you did this in such a way. I really think that when Lennon wrote this song, he was thinking more of your lines, of how you presented it. And uh, I th- I, Yeah, I think that... Um... I think that when you do cover a song, and especially a song by that's so famous and, and, and done so well the first time, you've got to bring something new to the table. And I think that um, stripping it back really showed the vulnerability in the lyrics and stuff. I thought, yeah, I think uh, I think it brings out the lyrics of the song. It did. Yeah. And it was. It and I, I was thinking before I listened to this, like, what can you do to this song and here you're by yourself there's no chorus you know there's no harmony and it was just well folks you're going to see at the break time we're going to go ahead and play that one for you but it's fabulous and very well done thank you thank you so speaking of you you have a new cd or ep out uh that came out in november want to talk a little bit about that yeah it's uh here it is it's uh it's called feels like and it's just uh, a few songs. Uh, it's got a little. If you see me live, I've got these in my guitar bag. Um, uh-huh. I order one via my blog. If you really, if you're really desperate for one, you know they're, they're a limited run because, you know, I'm a I'm a girl who likes records and things, so I make these. But most most people listen to music on download now, so it's on iTunes and stuff. Um, the, the the title track feels like. Uh, it's just a, a plain and simple love song, you know. It feels like love. Uh, the the rainproof is on there, and uh, oh, what are the other tracks that are on there? Because it's been a while, I can't remember. <laughs> What's the other track? Yeah, you're probably busy doing new things, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> wow. So. You, I mean, it's been so amazing for you. And what I really like, like uh, Monica said, she be, is that you do this on your own. You're up there. It's pure music. And um, I'm wondering, how does the audience respond to your unique sound? It must be wonderful. Uh, yeah, well, it's it, what, I find, what I found is uh, performing live is that it's a very specific listening audience that I need. So when I'm looking for a gig, that's what I want to find is that kind of intimate setting where people want to hear new music and they like that kind of solo artist vibe. Because of course, I can't make as much noise as a band. So maybe a a Saturday night in a pub isn't quite right. Um, So it's been an interesting because I've only been playing live for uh, a few years. Uh, so I've been kind of like learning on the job what's what suits me. <laughs> mm. um, I think it's really lovely when you're playing to see uh, a, like someone joining in with your chorus. And, cool. you know, like I say, my songs are like three minutes long. So they've picked it up already. <laughs> and they're joining in. It's great. OK, simple, simple is best. Simple is best. Um, so. You also have a uh, kind of a title. You are a Cornwall team leader for International Intimate Gig Champions, So Far Sounds. What's that about? So Far Sounds is so far sound. this uh, live music movement. It's, it's international. Um, I performed, I was I was due to perform at one in Liverpool before I uh, relocated. Um, so I've, I've become team leader for the Truro branch and we're hoping to get started in January, February next year. Um, and I mean, there's a load of stuff on their website, but in short, they, they like to host new music in an intimate venue. So it could be that someone has like a living room that they want to host a gig in or uh, a restaurant or uh, I know somebody said that they know someone who has an antique shop so we might do a gig there and so it's unusual spaces for you know a bit of live music so it's quite simple setup 
wonderful. It's wonderful. I just, I'd never, I thought, wow, so that's pretty cool. And and you are like the team leader. So what what responsibility do you have doing that? Well, we're just getting started. So oh. um, I'm finding act. I'm finding artists, I'm finding venues to play, um, I'm, I'm putting a team together to help with the videographing and the, the uh, what else do we need to do, the, 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 P, the PA setup, you know, all of that stuff. So yeah. there's, a, there's a lot to organise and it's once a month. Is uh, But yeah, we haven't quite got going yet, but we're in the midst of... <laughs> getting all the bits in the right places. You know, couldn't you, couldn't you see... Uh, Jody performing at places like where they have poetry readings or sure. uh, we call them coffee shops here, but I'm sure they have another yeah. name for them over. I think that would be perfect. Yeah. I'd like wow. to do that sort of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Um, my gosh, should we uh, nice uh, start and have a, a little break with some music and then we'll come back? Yes, I think that sounds great. And folks, you heard Jody in the beginning. Well, now you're going to hear some more. And I know you're going to enjoy it. We'll be back in a few. You've lost your love Well I saw her yesterday It's you she's thinking of And she told me what to say She said she loves you And you know that can't be bad She loves you You know you should be glad 
said you hurt her so she nearly lost her mind now she said she knows you're not the hurting kind she said she loves you and you know that can't be bad she loves you you know you should be glad she loves you she loves you and with a love like that you know you should be glad you know it's up to you i think it's only fair pride can hurt you too apologize to her she says she loves you and you know that can't be bad she loves you you know you should be glad she loves you yeah she loves you and with a love like that you know you should be glad and with a love like that you know you should be glad and with a love like that you know you should be glad Jody, that's fabulous music. I, I, it, you just amaze me at your talent. Um, I, I have to say that I, you are such a unique artist. I, I'm going to mention that a few times for what you do. What does Chibi want to accomplish? Let's say maybe in a year. Let's just give it a whirl. <laughs> Why not? Um, I think. Um, I've had a, a big, a lot of changes this year, so I've uh, relocated from Liverpool to Truro and I uh, started a new job and making new friends, so it's been a lot of upheaval and I haven't had a lot of time for songwriting, so I would like to um, get some more songs written, some time for songs, you know, and then of course I'd like to record those, um, I'd like to um, maybe record a new another video music the music video i made last year was really good fun uh, and obviously it helps when you're trying to share your music if you've got stuff like that so um so yeah i just want to keep making music and doing gigs and meeting people and enjoying it really radio shows oh <laughs> uh, yeah all of the radio shows <laughs> yes absolutely we, we're, we're, pro we're probably going to ask you back uh, in an, you know the next year or so because we want to we want to you know, keep keep uh, current with you. Thank you. So, so um, you have a thing called Songwriters Circle, and that happens every first Tuesday in the month of Portura. Talk a little bit about um, your Songwriters Circle. So it's um, it's a it's a new thing because, uh, like I say, I'm new new in the area. When I uh, when I was first performing in Liverpool, I made a lot of friends um, on the music circuit. Uh, and now that I'm living in Truro, I thought, well, I need to find my people. So I went, uh, Facebook's a wonderful thing for finding your people. <laughs> so oh, I yeah. went on Facebook, there's a, a Cornwall mu music community forum that I joined. And I said to people, you know, does anyone want to get together and, you know, share songs and kind of, uh, get you know that is, and they said and a few people said yes like there were more I was I didn't know if it was just me um there's a few open mics that I'd kind of been to but what I found was that um they were all heavy on the covers you know there wasn't so much yeah. original music so I so I went in this forum and I said does anybody want to get together and share original songs and a bunch of people said, yeah, I'm, I'm well up for it. Let's do it. Um, so we've been getting together. We've, it's our third meeting uh, on December 13th. And it's been going really nicely. Uh, it's kind of like a workshop. We kind of just uh, try our new songs out with each other. It's a nice, safe, friendly, unplugged environment. You know, it's not too late because we've all got work in the morning. And so it's, it's just a nice way to meet like-minded people, really. 
wow. Well, maybe a collaborative type EP or uh, something like that would that would be fabulous. Well, well certainly, my 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 idea is that we we get together all of our skills and we put on a showcase at some point. So, a songwriter circle showcase, maybe twice a year or something. You know. Yeah, that would that be would fabulous. Be- Oh my gosh, they were they're such amazing talent there in, in uh, Liverpool. This, well, yeah, we have some favorites, but we won't mention them. But anyway, um, it's <laughs> it's just it's just great. Um, so you have worked so hard at crafting your music. Is there a favorite song? Or, uh, you know, and also along with that, it, was there a famous or was there an a, event that really stood out in your mind? Um, so often the latest song that you've written is kind of your new favorite because mm. it's the new baby. Mm, um, right. But but I do have kind of like my all time all time favorites as well. Um, I would say probably uh, one of my all-time favorites is Always on the Run. I think, uh, yeah, I think you've heard that one. Mm-hmm. And it's um, it's about a painting of the same name uh, by uh, an American artist called Todd White. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a girl on a motorbike. He, he draws these great pictures of characters and they really sort of evoke a story for me. And this girl is on a motorbike and she's looking back like she's been causing trouble. And I thought, I love this girl, I want to write a song for her. And I kind of had a bit of Dolly Parton influence as well. It's got it's got a lot of um, guts about it, I think. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, Jody, I've noticed one thing about you, um, like, let's say Casablanca, for example. Mm-hmm. You took that and created a song. Uh, I see that you connect with art and you take from that what your concept is or meaning and you bring it out to others in the form of music and i you know you're one of the few people i know that is able to do that i mean most just say okay i created this it came to me you look at something and it speaks to you yeah i really do love um art and films and I love stuff, you know, creative stuff, and I shove it in my head, and then I guess it comes out at some point. <laughs> right. It's, well, it's great. It's great. So an event or a person or uh, maybe just some, somebody you met in the crowd that stood out in your mind that you will never forget. Oh. Probably uh, been many, I know. <laughs> many, I'm sure, but pick yeah. one. So, uh, let me think. That's a toughie. <laughs> um, I know. Not putting you on the spot or anything. No, we're not. No, I feel like, oh, God, I got something to think. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's narrow it down. Let's look at Cavern Club. Was there something r- remarkable that you uh, experienced in the Cavern Club? Let's start there. Well, um, oh, it was just, I mean, uh, the, the, the few times that I've performed there, it's been so magic. Mm-hmm. And, and I do think it will be, um, it's going to be nearly impossible to beat that knee trembling experience, <laughs> you know, it, because I, it, I'm such a huge fan of the Beatles and that place is so full of their energy even though I know it's not the original club but it's built on their music and their fans so in the room at any one time are you know 200 people who adore that music as I do and so being um, fortunate enough to perform there to those people yeah it's 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 breathtaking really so how did they how did they respond to your music when you were there yes i'm banned now no (laughs) 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 they they loved it Uh oh (laughs) very much in the style of you know it's very much in the style of that stuff it's short melodic Uh um storytelling 
you know so uh, so yeah it, w it went down well thankfully <laughs> Well, yeah, it's like I said, it's amazing music. So uh, I'm going to, maybe this is, might be a tough question too then. We're going to do a little imagining, uh, she beat. Let's say, what would you say if Paul McCartney or Ringo Starr walked into the club? <laughs> so I did actually get the chance to meet Paul McCartney uh, one oh. time many years ago before I was, before I had started writing my own music. And um, it, that was pre a pretty epic experience for me because I was such a fan of the music. And um, I, uh, I'd recently read a book by, I think it was Barry Miles wrote a book, The Long and Winding Road, about Paul McCartney oh, yes. and, and, mm -hmm. and how he was self-taught and how he had this ethos that if you wanted to write a song, then you should just try and write a song because why not? And I think for years, because I'd been such a fan of music, I'd kind of not wanted to fail at that. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So, um, so this, he, so in, without meaning to, learning about Paul's early days and how he got started inspired me hugely to have a go. Um, and so when I met him, uh, I was, I just happened to be at a concert that he was at in uh, Brighton in England. And he was living there when he was married to Heather. Um, and my friend was working with a band called Madness. Do you know them? Uh, I've heard of them. They yes. were big in yeah. the 80s. Yes. But they're yes. still going. They're like one of those bands oh, really? that does all the festivals. And uh, so he, they were gigging. And he was backstage and I was backstage. <laughs> we were in a tiny room. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I can't leave a room this tiny and not say anything to Paul McCartney. I can't, like, that's just not something that can happen. <laughs> so he was flanked all times by these, like, leggy blonde women. It was a nightmare. So I was kind of, like, stalking him, like, waiting for my moment to catch him. And he was on his own for about half a second. And there was a sofa between us. But I grabbed my opportunity and I stuck out my hand for a handshake. I said, Sir Paul. And he said, oh. Hello. <laughs> uh, I said, hi, I'm, hi, I'm Jodie. And he said, oh, okay. And I said, you know my auntie. Now, of course, Paul McCartney's probably heard that a thousand, ten thousand times. You know, you know right. my auntie, or you know someone in my family. Uh, but he did actually work um, as a patron for the vegetarian society that my auntie was uh, chair of at the time. So he went, oh. oh yeah, I know her, good girl, she's a good girl. So my auntie was chuffed when I told her this story and I shook his hand and then I said, oh, well, I'll let you, ca I'll let you get on. I made my small talk and then I ended the conversation and then I left the building and I had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God! I oh. know he had really soft hands when I shook his hand. Ah, uh, you you <laughs> yeah. remember that? See, <laughs> oh, that that would have definitely I would have been uh, probably fainted myself. <laughs> I, oh, I'd be. A, I'd be a, <laughs> it, it's fabulous. So speaking of music, where can we find she beat? Where can they find your music to purchase? There are there's music on iTunes, um, Amazon Music. Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, not so much on YouTube, but I'm working on it. <laughs> um, I think that's all the places. What about Facebook? Uh, and they can find you there and you have the, and you have a website, I believe. Yeah, so I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and I have a blog which uh, is shebeat.co.uk. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, I, I noticed that you do a lot of blogging, which is very cool. And you and, and so p fans can go to your uh, website and catch up on what you're doing, which is wonderful. So it, what is next as far as music goes? Are you thinking maybe a possible another CD or where, where were you thinking you were, you're going to go? I think probably next year I'm going to try and do some videos for YouTube. Um, I'm going to try and do lots more gigs, get to know my local region. You know, there's a lot of places new for me to find. There's a lot of festivals in this area in the summer. Yeah. So I'm hoping to be busy come the summer. Yeah, and, um, and uh, 
you know, I want to write some new songs and record them. I, I quite like to get together with some other local musicians, you know, do a bit of collaboration and get some kind of a bigger sound maybe uh, than just me and the guitar. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see what happens. Yeah, yeah, you've and got you a know, great uh, yeah. You know, ahead, Jeremy, um, you're doing it right, though. I, I say this many times, but people don't listen. There are so many people that are just they run out and they do a cd and they think they're going to be famous you're actually going out and mingling with people you're getting fans you're playing as many places as you can and that's what you need to do because yeah you might sell some cds just because you know some people knew you but your fans are going to come from the more intimate things that you do such as them seeing you and getting mm. to know you and uh you're doing it right thank you you know so so uh, any uh, current gigs that you might want to tell your fans about and your friend, uh, viewers about that are coming up well we're getting in the uh run up to christmas now but um i have been booked for a gig in february there's um a place on the beach in a, mm -hmm. in a place called New Quay, which is about uh, 40 minutes from here, uh, called Lusty Glaze. So I have a gig there in February, and that, it'll be on my website and stuff. You know, I'll share it. Um, and then I've been booked for a festival in August called Beard Masters, and that's here in Cornwall as well. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I put all of my gigs up uh, on my Facebook okay. and stuff as when they come in, but. Um, I'm kind of like I've got to const I've got to set up my uh, sofa sounds gig that'll be in January or February, cool. um, and then that and then yeah I'm sure they'll all, they all trickle in. <laughs> right. Well, hey, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Uh, now we have Christmas coming up. We're going to be doing a special Christmas show, and it will, will be shown on the 25th of uh, Christ you know Christmas Day. So if you have any music, Christmas music you'd like to submit. We'd be very happy to uh, take it, and um, it's we we you'd send it to Punky, right? Punky at itmattersradio.com. Is that correct, Monica? Yes. I got that. Yes. So yeah, send us if you have a little Christmas song, um, even a you know a remake of one would be fine. We're we're always looking for great music. Yeah, share uh, okay. share it with uh, all the all your uh, groups too, because. Mm -hmm. That's our whole purpose of doing any of this is so that we can introduce people to new music, new talent. And uh, what a better way to do it than with Christmas songs or holiday right, right. songs. Right, <laughs> it right. doesn't matter. Right. You know, so, Jody, go ahead, Jody, you have a specific type of music and it connects with emotions a lot, whether it be fun, sad, um, you know, the whole range of them. Is there anything that you're trying to bring forward through your music to people? I think what I love most about when I perform is when people can relate to the stories and can relate to the emotions in, in, the, in the songs. Um, I'm, a, you know, a super sensitive person. I'm a total empath. And so I think that, that when I do share these stories, um, it's kind of, it's therapeutic for me, but it's also, it, it's also, I know that people can relate and I kind of feel like we're all in it together and that if we can all recognize that, then it, life will be a little bit easier. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a wonderful thing to say. And yeah, yeah. I, I just think you should keep on doing it. <laughs> yes. And the songs are so positive, uh, Jody. Jody. It, they're just wonderful. It's just so, I don't know. It, well, it, it does touch you. It touches you. It yeah. really does. Yeah. Pure you know, girls, I, I should tell you, um, I don't know if you listened on SoundCloud to my song, Believe. But yes. it was, um, I shared it as a free download last year because um, I created a, a thing called Be Lovely Day, and which is all about being positive and, and nice to each other and it not costing a penny. Because I think that, um, you know, especially in an austere economy like we're experiencing at the moment, that if we can remind people that the best things in life really are free, mm -hmm. that it, 
it's and especially in January when we've all kind of like you know we're all spent emotionally and financially. <laughs> so, um, That's true. So, you know, it is a it is a it is if I if I have any messages <laughs> because often you know I don't take life too seriously, but if I do have any messages, it's that kindness and positivity can make the world a difference. Yeah, and yes. and, and you get to choose what to do that. Because some people will wake up in the morning and they'll have the, oh, woe me syndrome, you know, and that's how their whole day is going to be. But if you get up each morning and think, oh, it's a new day, new experiences, then it's going to be positive no matter what happens, you know. Right. So I think that's right. wonderful. Well, Jody, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you. I, I'm hoping many people who are listening to the show will share it with others. So they'll get to know you also. And please check out her Facebook, her SoundCloud, um, the uh, blog sites. And we're hoping that, Jody, you'll get back with us next year and let us know what's going on. Yeah, All right. Cool. Okay. Keep us up to Okay. Okay. Bye, Jody. Thanks so Jody, much for thanks. joining us. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, love. Oh, she's great. You know, great. well, yeah. Carrie, I can't, I can't say enough about um, how her music is absolutely pure. Mm -hmm. People might get tired of me saying this, but that's talent. That's absolute talent. Yep. Yes, you know, it is. And that's the way that it should be. Mm -hmm. so. And she's such a delightful uh, young lady, and 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 I do get a very positive vibe, and her music is positive. There's a message, but it's very positive message in that, and she's just a delight. Um, on stage, I I saw a few of her live uh, performances, amazing, and it's interesting about the audience that I noticed, Monica, is there's total silence. And that's, you know, you usually hear blah, 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 chat, 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 but not when Jody's playing. Well, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like if you go to the theater and you're watching something and there's silence. Mm -hmm. It's people are so caught up into it. They're actually feeling it. And that's what that type. And that's why I like the pure music. You know, mm -hmm. other music is great. It's fun to dance to. I'm not putting, right. you know, we have many yeah. artists on here. Oh, of course. Who, who do different types of music, and it, they're great also. But mm -hmm. I, I just think people need to appreciate the pure music and, yes. and share it also. Yep. Well, um, before we leave, I want to just do one more call out and let people know that we are still accepting submissions from music for Flash mm -hmm. Fiction and um, for Poetry. And we'll be doing that until the 9th at midnight. And that's mm -hmm. December 9th. And you can send that to punky at itmattersradio.com. And that's P-U-N-K-Y at itmattersradio.com. Or go to our website, mm -hmm. itmattersradio.com. <laughs> and right. you can also send it through there. Because we'd like to get as many new artists on as possible. And let people hear your holiday music. And... um. Now, feel free to join us every day at 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday, for our mm -hmm. indie music shows. And then, of course, Sunday at 3 p.m., when we bring you either a special show, because we do have those. That's what our Christmas show is, right. and our musical guest interviews. So, you ready for some more music, Carrie? I am. I'm, I'm very excited. And uh, everybody, thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, we really appreciate you being there. And do come back seven days a week, like Monica said, 7 p.m. Eastern for some great, great indie music. Right. And then 3 p.m. for our music. Okay, mm -hmm. folks, take a listen to this, and we'll catch you next time. Take care. All right. Don't waste any time, cause
Cause I'm always on the run Always on your mind Like a dream come true Careful what you wish for Cause I'm always on the run Gotta keep my motor running Gotta keep my heart from showing Don't try to change me boy I'm always on the run Always on the run Didn't see me coming Knocked you off your feet Taking off was easy Cause I'm always on the run Gotta keep my motor running Gotta keep my heart from showing Don't try to change me boy I'm always on the run Always on the run Hear the sound of me leaving See the dust kicked up Watch the trail I'm blazing Cause I'm always on the run Gotta keep my motor running Gotta keep my heart from showing Don't try to change me boy I'm always on the run Always on the run Yeah, it 
feels like 